Thank you for joining me again on another Healing for the Nations Live. Let me also express our appreciation right up front for being able to uh, broadcast our programs every week uh, through uh, KITV Network, uh, through uh, Dr. Kazumba and uh, Glory Charles and, and their great vision for evangelism for our nation and around the world. So thank God for this platform. And I want to encourage you to um, those of you who've been uh, viewing and have been partaking of the good programming, excellent programming and programs on this network, you know, support this, uh, pro this um, network with your finances as the Lord um, prospers and blesses you so that they can continue to um, share the word of God and fulfill what God has put in their heart. It's an unselfish vision, taking God's word to our own nation and the nations of the earth. So thank you for your partnership. Now, we've been, um, also let me say this, um, th thank those of you who've been partnering with us and helping us at uh, Foundation for Life, helping us to share the word of God. We couldn't do it without you. So again, thank you for your partnership. If you want to give, just give to and send uh, your e-transfers to info at foundationforlife.ca or check out our website, www.foundationforlife.ca. Go hit the give online button and you'll be taken to a secure platform where you can give to your heart's content. You know, give some, large or small, you know, monthly or, or one-time gifts, we just appreciate your partnership. You're helping us to build lives and families on the Shore Foundation. Also, don't forget, we invite you to join us. If you're in the greater Toronto area, we invite you to join us for our Sunday service every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. at 2950 Keel Street, where we share the word of God. We pray for one another. We, we are building relationships and strong fellowship with the family of God and doing great exploits and continuing to share the word of God to our city, to our region and beyond. And so also we thank those of you who join us online in every service and keep in touch with the ministry. Let us know how God is using this ministry to bless your life so that we can join you in thanking God in celebrating his goodness in your life. So again, we just bless you and thank God for you. Now, we've been on a series, a great journey on right now, entitled The Power of Your Tongue. The Power of Your Tongue. I mean, that's a message the Lord put in my heart. In fact, I was about to, I was waking up one morning and the phrase, the power of your tongue. And I felt the Lord impress me, say, Carl, you need to take more seriously the power of your words, your words. And I just, just I was hearing him talk about the importance of my words my words and their ability to, to affect and change and transform my life so it, it carries more of the will of God, his will and his best for my life. And after that, ensuing that, I just felt impressed. I needed to share this message with you. So thank those of you who've been uh, sending us notes and testimonies of how this message is changing and transforming your life and helping you to become a really increase in being more like Jesus, in helping you to, we could say, um, guard your words so that they're more creative and they release more of the blessing and the life and the goodness of God in your life. So, so there's been a number of lessons we've had. I don't know what number this is right now, but again, we're going to do part two of the of um, angels and your words. So again, it's all under that same series, The Power of Your Tongue, looking again at angels and your words, part two. Let's review some things we looked at previously and we'll add to it in uh, this segment. So we started off our last segment, Angels and Your Words, talking about that God, um, when God made the universe, he created it with words powerful Genesis and then Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 it talks us or tells us about the um, the Genesis 126 the creation of mankind again humankind mankind the species of man and scripture tells us God made man in his likeness and image now think about this now I know this puts our brain on tilt sometime but so now I say this hum humankind mankind the species of man is more like who it's more, we're more like God than anyone else. I'm, think about this. God said, now God said this. We didn't say this first. God said, I'm making man. Let's make, let us make man. Let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the triune God, one God and through, through three persons, three manifestations, says, let us make man 
in our own likeness and image. Think about that. So that word means, that word image is likeness. It means reproduction. It means facsimile. It means copy. God reproduced himself in mankind, humankind, species man in the earth. And that mankind is made in male and female, the male model, the female model, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. And so we said God creates with words. Mankind, we also, made in the image of God, were designed to create with words also. I said to you, we've got so many examples of that. You buy products with words. I say, you marry with words. Think about it. You bury, you, have, you die with words. I mean, everything is words. Everything, this is a word-controlled planet. Words, we were made in the image of God, made to operate like God who operates by words. This is principally why your words are powerful. Your words are important. Now, let me say this as, as it comes to my heart. This is why when you're a face with a crisis, whether you realize it or not, pressure is put on your tongue to release things. You ever face with a situation, could be a relational thing. Some people have been in a relational thing, and what happened? Pressure got to them. And oftentimes, sometimes it could have been a financial pressure. It could be something in your relationship, something medically or whatever going on, something with your children. And there's pressure. You're feeling pressure. Now, what, what's the design of that pressure to get to your mouth? That pressure is going to cause you to do something. So some people, they got so overwhelmed that what happened? They, st they said death words that killed a relationship. See, your words are powerful. That's why when in the situation, a person you, you're, you're watching, you're listening to this right now, you may be facing a situation, it looks impossible. But I'm telling you, will you trust God in spite of the circumstances? Don't rehearse and speak according to your circumstances. When it looks like there's no way, no way, there's no opportunity, will you say, Revelations 3 verse 8, the Lord has set before me an open door and no one can shut it. When it looks like there's danger, there's, enemy, there's things around you that's going to destroy you, will you say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper? And every tongue that rises against me in judgment shall be condemned and shown to be in the wrong. Isaiah 54, 17. When it looks like you, you're, you're, full, you're surrounded by wants and needs, <laughs> will you say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack, I shall not want. When you feel as sick as a dog and you've gotten the worst doctor's report, will you say, I know Isaiah 53, but he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my guilt and my iniquities. The chastisement for my peace was upon him, and with his stripes I am healed. I know that. I believe that. Himself took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses. Will you say what God says about you, irrespective of your circumstances? And it's not you say that. You set your anchor in what God says about you. See, you're believing what God's word says. That's why 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, we walk by faith and not by sight. See, the believer is walking not by his senses or her senses, but by what God has said. And that soup, the supernatural power in God's spirit words will change your life. It's interesting what Jesus said in John 6, 63. He says, but my words are spirit and they are life. See, so our faith and our anchor is in the word of God. In fact, in that same scripture in John chapter 6, probably around 63 to 69, when Jesus talked about, I am the bread of life. And see, when he said some strong words, talking about people putting their absolute faith in Jesus, the living word, it says many, almost all of them left him. <laughs> Think about it. See, that cost of discipleship, which is put in our absolute faith in Jesus and no one else. I mean, almost, almost all of his people, disciples left him. But then he said, he turned around, will you leave also? Isn't that interesting? And Peter says this, no, Jesus, 
Who will we turn to? You have the words of eternal life. Boy, see now, he wasn't just talking about life to live after you die. That's not what he's talking about. You've got the words of eternal life. In other words, I need to live by your words. I'm living by your words right now. I need those words to live by every day. And that's what you and I, that's why you've tuned into this broadcast. That's why we appreciate you tuning in week after week, every time we're on the air or every time we meet. You see, these are words. God's anointed us to give you words of life that will strengthen your life right now, that gives you hope for your life right now. Praise God. That's why, why we're not walking by our circumstances. God sees possibilities when it looks impossible. See, God is speaking provision and sustenance and health and healing and restoration to your life, even in the midst of a seeming depression or famine. And what do you believe? You believe what God says about you. And you act upon those words and see his goodness come into your life. Anyway, I see, I see you, you're always getting me sidetracked here, but I'm telling you, this is good news. This is good news for your life. Now, we've also been, we said this, Psalms 8 verse 2, we saw a great scripture there. And I'm going to read it again because it talks about um, man's, uh, mankind made in the image of God. So Psalms, let's look at that. Psalms chapter, excuse me here, I'm finding it on the Amplified. Psalms chapter 8. It says, O Lord, our Lord, our excellent, majestic, and glorious is your name in all the earth. You've set your glory, honor above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and unweaned infants, you've established strength because of your foes that you might silence the enemy and the avenger. When I view and consider the heavens, the work of your hands, the moon, the stars, which you've ordained and established. He said, now, in, in light of the magnificence of God, the power of God. Now, think about it. I mean, God who has no beginning, no end. Think about this. I mean, the, the God with whom the past, present, and future are all wrapped up in one. I mean, think, think about this. This God this, this, this powerful, almighty being, think of it, has no beginning, has no end. The very concept of God is hard for our natural mind to comprehend. But now he says, now, in light of this, <laughs> who you are, your wisdom, your magnificence, I mean, I think, think about your supernatural existence, who you are, as evidenced by what you've done. Look at what you've created. Look at even the very earth you created and, and what's inside the earth. Resources still undiscovered. Now think about this God who did all of this, who made the constellation, the stars, the universe, and the universe that still continues to expand right now while we speak. Now think about this. I mean, undiscovered planets yet being born. But yet he says this. Now, what is man? In light of who you are, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of earth-born man that you care for him. I mean, what is this, this being man? I mean, compared to you why, are you, why are we on your mind? Why do you even think about us? Why do you even care about us? Now, the psalmist is saying this when he considers how great God is. But then it tells you why. You've made him a little lower than God. See, a little lower than himself. And you crowned him with glory and honor. You see, God, you are so important to God. Human, you are so important to God. He said, you crowned him with glory and honor. See, the Adam, I tell you, he had a light on him. He had a glory on him. He wasn't some caveman. I tell you, you know, forget any image of Adam being a caveman, forget that. See, that's the unregenerate mind, thinking that God made a, a, a being that had no intelligence. And that's crazy, because in Genesis chapter two, it says that Adam not only named, see, but named the animals, which means he had foresight and insight into their nature and characteristics. Think about that. 
I'm telling you, so Adam was some kind of man, some kind of being, Adam and Eve both, my goodness. So you got to understand, God was seeing them, say, you're mindful of them. You care about them. Why? Because mankind, humankind, the species of man is made in the image and likeness of God. He sees you and I as his children. And for that reason is why he sent Jesus to die for our sins so that he could legally restore us back to himself. God wanted, God want, had made a plan, says, before the foundation of the earth to restore us, to adopt us as children to himself. Man, I tell you, that's the love of God for you. That's why you shouldn't give up. That's why no matter what you're facing, you need to believe God, you're going to get over that. You're going to move forward. You're going to rise and shine, I'm telling you, and you're going to be a blessing and inspiration to other people. So it says God made him, made a humankind, you and I, made us just a little lower than God himself. So that means, listen, not a little lower than the angels, but a little lower than God. So now, what we, so we're talking about the order of things. There is God. There is humankind, the species of man, and there's angels. That's the order. It isn't God, angels, and man. No, we're made higher. We're, we're in the God class. We're not in the angel class. Think about that. Just, just, just think about that for a moment. So now we've talked about that, and we said this. Look at verse, we, said, we looked at Psalms 103. We need to look at that again. So Psalms 103. Now we're talking about the, your words and angels now. Now that we've shared some of those things and you got more truth in you about that. You can believe this now. Psalms 103, verse 2. Psalms 100, no, Psalms 103, excuse me, verse 20. Excuse me there. So Psalms 103, verse 20. Bless affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones, watch this now, who do his commandments hearkening to the voice of his word. Look at verse 21. Bless affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, all you hosts of his, you his ministers, look at this, who do his pleasure. Now you see the word do, we've got that twice now. Angels are listening for God's words. To what? They're programmed to do God's word. They're programmed to use their mighty strength and supernatural power, praise God, to impact the lives of, the, we could say, human affairs by acting on God's word. It says they do God's pleasure. They do God's commands. They hearken. They're listening to the voice of his word. That's what it says right there. Psalms 103 verse 20. It says, bless the Lord all, all his works. In all places of his dominion, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. That's not a powerful scripture. So it tells you what angels are. They're supernatural beings, mighty beings that hearken to God. They're programmed to act upon God's words. They do God's word. They're listening for God's words. Let me get ahead of myself. I, I think I said it last time. Well, who gives voice to God's word? There's God Almighty, and, his, and, and we do made in the image of God. Could it be sometimes our angels have been very unemployed because the only thing they do is hearken to God's voice. They're hearkening to God's words. So just think about this. And there's, only, there's only God and human beings who give voice to God's word. Now God said, listen, it says in Psalms, it says, thy word, O Lord, is settled in heaven. And, and Jesus said this. He said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So if God's will is already done in heaven, who's responsible for releasing his will on the earth? It's you and I. <laughs> it's believers. Think about it. It's believers. You and I, we're responsible for, by speaking his words, by so doing what happens. We give the angels work to do. We give the angels something to act upon. Can you imagine? They can't wait to hear God's word through the mouth of a believer so they can bring it to pass because they delight in bringing God pleasure by obeying 
God's word, by doing what his word says. Now go to this now. So angels listen for and they act upon our words. Go to Psalms, so Hebrews, excuse me, Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 13, Hebrews 1, 13. look at this scripture, Hebrews 1, verse 12, well verse 13, excuse me. But to which of the angels, as he ever said, sit at my right hand, associated with me in my royal dignity, till I make your enemies a stool for your feet? Look at verse 14. Are not the angels all, that's all of them, ministering spirits? Look at that. Minister, minister means servants. So serving spirits, servants, sent out in the service of God for the assistance of those who are to inherit salvation. That is amazing. Angels are servant spirits then, according to this scripture. Angels are sent out. Now, how are they sent out? They're sent out by, being, by, by, by acting on words they've heard from God and words they've heard from believers. Because we're made in the image of God. Look at this. Are not the angels all all of them, ministering spirits, servants, sent out in the service of God for the assistance of those who are to inherit salvation. Who are the ones who inherit salvation? Are we not the ones? Think about this now. Human beings on this planet who've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. God who has provided salvation that covers every area of our life, spirit, soul, body, every arena of our life, is made provision for salvation for us in Christ Jesus. Now the angels, man, God has sent them in our life to assist us, to help us to receive the full package, the full benefits of our salvation in Christ Jesus. But the scripture tells us, how do they do it? They hearken to the voice of God's word. They're waiting for words. They're waiting. Look at, look, I mean, look at this. I mean, man, I tell you, this is absolutely outstanding. We've got to pay attention then to our words. When we pay attention to our words, we're also paying attention to the ministry of angels. The, we could say God's help that is provided to help us to receive the full benefit package of our salvation in Christ Jesus. Now, just a few scriptures I want to add to that before we quit today to further reinforce your belief in God's provision of angels. Now, listen, we don't seek angels. That's really important. We don't seek for angels. But God wants you to believe that he's made provision for angels, angelic assistance in your life. Now, great scripture, Psalms 91, verse, Psalms 91, verse 10 and 11, I believe. Psalms 91, let's look at that. Psalms 91, this is a good scripture. I'm going to have to move a little bit fast because my time is moving fast. I tell you, look at this. Verse 10, there shall no evil, talking about the one who has made the Lord his refuge and fortress. He says, there shall no evil befall you, nor shall any plague or calamity come near your tent or your home. Listen, for or because, because of this, he will give his angels a special charge over you. Look at this. To accompany and defend and preserve you in all your ways of obedience and service. Look at that. So angels protecting your home, protecting your family against any plague that would include coronavirus, right, COVID-19, or any calamity, see? So now, what, so part of the discipleship, part of us, our faith, is speaking God's word, not being like the world and speaking fear and death and destruction, see? See, because, see, you can tell what you believe by what you're saying consistently. You gotta watch your mouth. Listen, and it says this, they, talking about the angels, verse, verse 12, they shall bear you up on their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. See, the angels are there for protection. 
See, you shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and dragon, you'll trample under your feet. See, the, the, those angels are there for our protection. See, but they work with the believer who is upright, the believer who's obedient, the believer who is believing God, the believer, praise God, who has God's word coming out of his mouth because he's saying what he believes. He's giving voice to God's protection. So you should be saying, thank God the Lord is my light and salvation, my salvation. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. Well, that's a command of the Lord. The angels receive that as a command. And they are sister, the Bible says, they're sister, they're servant spirits. They're helping us to receive the salvation that God's provided for us. And that salvation affects our spirit, soul, and body, socially, financially. They're there to help us in every arena. Boy, I tell you, that's powerful. Now look at this scripture, Psalms 104. Look at this one. Man, I'm telling you, Psalms 104. Psalms 104. Hallelujah. My goodness, look at this. Psalm 104, verse 4. Who makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his, his ministers. It's talking about the angels talking about their power, talking about their strength. You know, in, in Hebrews, um, I should have looked at this, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, it says, you know, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? And that's continuing from what he said in, in the end of chapter 1. So are talking about the ministry of angels, the salvation, the protection, the preservation, the deliverance that God's provided for you and I through the ministry of angels that he's assigned to our lives to protect us and help us. Boy, I'm telling you, praise God, hallelujah. Now, let me close up with this. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. I got about three minutes. Matthew chapter 4. Boy, I'm telling you, you need to let me know how you're receiving this. God's going to move in your life. I'm telling you, praise God. God, as you believe God's word, as you believe the angels that is assigned over your life. Now look at this. This is the ministry of Jesus. Look at look at this now. The, um, verse, verse, let's say verse 5, Matthew 4, verse 5. Then the devil took him up, talking about Jesus now, remember the temptations, into the holy city, placed him on a turret pentacle, gable of the temple sanctuary, and he said to him, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written... He will give his angels charge over you. Look at that. And they will bear you up on their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. See, the devil now, see, he knew what Psalms 91, 11 and 12 says. Pity that a lot of Christians don't know that it says that. But of course, he wanted him now to test God, to, say, to commit suicide, really, you know, to do something stupid. You know, no, Jesus wasn't fallen for that. Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it's written, you shall not tempt test or try exceedingly the Lord your God. But why we brought that out here, the devil know there are angels on assignment to protect your life. Boy, you need to, you need to underline that. And then finally, look at this one, Matthew 18, and we'll quit. Matthew chapter 18, look at this. Oh, I'm telling you, praise God. Thank God for his provision and his protection for your life. So look at this, Matthew 18 this was when Jesus was, I believe, praying for the young children. Look at what he says now. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, Matthew 18, verse 10. Beware that you do not despise or feel scornful toward or think little of one of these little ones. Think about talking about children now. Watch this. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels always are in the presence of and look upon the face of my Father who is in heaven. I think that's interesting. See, those angels that are in the presence of God, remember angels are supernatural beings and they have the ability to not only be in heaven but also be in the earth realm. See, so they, that we could say they have access to both arenas. They're getting information from both places. Oh, I'm listening, boy, I'm telling you. And he said here, they're angels. That means angels are assigned to little children. Boy, think about it. Angels are assigned to little children. What do you think happens to a child that's aborted? Do you think that it, that child goes to hell? Of course not. 
that angel, that, that child is escorted back to heaven. Boy, I'm telling you. I'm telling God, there are angels assigned to your life for your protection, for your prosperity, for your preservation. And that's why I want to encourage you. Praise God. Believe in God's provision. He didn't just want you to be born again and have your sins forgiven. He wants you to know his, his supreme love for you as his creation. His plan for you is good. His will for you is good. And I pray for you today in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for your people today that they will prosper and be in health and that their soul will prosper in the name of Jesus. Father, that one that has been discouraged, even for weeks, I pray they be strengthened and take a hold of your strength today. They will take a hold of the strong hand of the Lord. Father, I thank you for your hand of blessing and goodness upon their lives. And I declare your word over the lives of your people today that surely your goodness and your mercy mercy follows them all the days of their life. I pray that grace, your grace and your peace be multiplied in their lives today in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for opening doors for them, which no man can shut. Doors consistent with your plan and your purpose for their lives in the name of Jesus. And I declare, I proclaim today, they're blessed in their going out, blessed in their coming in. Everything they set their hands to prospers, increases, and grows now in the name of Jesus. They're the blessed. They're the head, not the tail. Always above, never beneath. I say they ride upon the high places of the earth. Be strengthened today. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength today in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to thank you so much for joining us again in another Healing for the Nations Live. I want to remind you of our Wednesday discipleship program, Wednesday prayer and the word at 7 p.m. We do that via Zoom. If you want to be a part of that, send us an, a note to info at foundationforlife.ca or give us a call on 416-614-1220. We'd like to send you that Zoom link and you can join us and you can continue to grow as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and fulfill his beautiful plan for your life. Well, we just bless you in the name of the Lord. Let us know how this program is blessing your life and how you're growing and how God is touching your life and how your needs are being met. I'm telling you, God's got great plans for your life. Live in it today. Experience the blessing of God today. And until next time, God's richest and best be to you and for you and your family. We love you. See you next time. Thank you for joining us today on Healing for the Nations with Pastor Carl Lewis. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we encourage you to partner with us financially to continue the teaching of God's Word. To give, please write to Foundation for Life Christian Ministries or securely online at foundationforlife.ca. Healing for the Nations is a ministry of Foundation for Life Christian Ministries. Visit foundationforlife.ca and avail yourself of our valuable life-building resources for free. Join us next time on Healing for the Nations.